Welcome back to your lecture videos. Today we're going to be talking about audience. So who is your audience? Who are you writing to? And more importantly, how are you writing to make it specific to them? How can you make sure that your words are really going to resonate with the reader of your paper? Let's switch over to our notes pages and let's find out. So what is audience? Audience is simply the reader of your writing. Now, in class, what does that mean? Well, literally then, the audience is your instructor and your classmates. But in real life, you're not going to know personally who's reading your writing all the time. So we don't want to always assume that you're writing to me or to your classmates. Therefore, we need to get a better idea of who you're writing to and how you can tailor your writing to them. So to start, let's look at some examples of how audience is used in movies and how movies change to meet the demands of their audiences. Our first example is My Best Friend's Wedding. In this movie, Julia Roberts is in love with her best friend, but she doesn't realize it until he's getting married to somebody else. And so then enters her best friend, played by Rupert Everett, who happens to be gay, so we can't have any love triangle situations going on. Now, when this movie was originally made, all we saw was this very small role by Rupert Everett playing her best friend. But when this film went through test audiences before it was released, the test audiences liked Rupert Everett's character so much they wanted to see more of him. So now we're at the last scene of the movie. The man has married the other woman, sorry if I spoiled it for you, and Julia Roberts is alone and sad, sitting at the table in her hideous bridesmaid's dress all by herself calling Rupert Everett, who, as it turns out, has hung around and comes back to dance with her at the wedding. But that scene was never there to begin with. It was only there to please the audience. The next example is Fatal Attraction. Married man Michael Douglas has a steamy affair with co-worker Glenn Close. And originally, Glenn Close's character didn't, did not die, but audiences hated her so much that the entire ending was rewritten to kill her off. I mean, I can see why audiences hated her. She did kill the family bunny. So she died at the end, again, just to please the test audience. So if audience is so important, how can we make sure that we're writing to the audience? And how do we know who the audience is who we're writing to? Well, I have a couple different examples that show how sometimes things are changed to meet the specific audience. Let's think about Hansel and Gretel, the fairy tale. It's been turned into multiple movies. This version looks like your typical kid's version. Fairy tale, young kids, some not so scary looking monsters. And then we have Hansel and Gretel, witch hunters, where Hansel and Gretel are all grown up. The monsters are a lot scarier and suddenly they're not innocent kids. Now they're a weapon wielding witch slayers. So how did we go from innocent little kids to a couple of badasses? Well, the answer is simple, audience. This version of Hansel and Gretel was written for kids. Couldn't be too scary, had to be a little bit fantastical, so that way kids would like it and parents would let their kids watch it. In contrast, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters was written for adults, and not just any adult, an adult who likes horror movies, an adult who likes to see the bad guys get beat up, and probably an adult who likes to see a girl in some skin-tight clothing. My next example of how audience affects the way a story takes shape is Abraham Lincoln. So here we have the movie Lincoln, a biographical war history movie, and I'm comparing that to Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, a not at all historical fictional horror film in which Abraham Lincoln isn't a war hero but a vampire slayer. So here we have two versions of Abraham Lincoln. War hero, 16th president of the United States, and a vampire slayer, which I can't even say with a straight face. So how are these so different? Of course, the answer is audience. This Lincoln film was made for history buffs, people who are like war movies, who like historical biographies. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was made for, well, I'm really not sure who they were intending there. I'm going to guess horror movie fans who like to see vampires get their heads chopped off, I guess. <laughs> so 
So back on the notes pages now so that we can summarize what we've just learned. So audience affects the shape of the story. It can, as we saw in movies, affect the ending or the entire genre. So, now you're not going to be writing movies in this class, you're not going to be writing stories. So what you need to know is that audience affects what you say and how you say it. Well, what does that mean? That means that you need to keep your audience in mind when you're writing. In a later lecture, we'll go over how to figure out who your audience is. But in this introduction, it's important just to understand how your wording and your language changes based on your audience. So one thing we have to consider is vocabulary. Depending on who your audience is depends on what kind of vocabulary you can use. So there's jargon, which is technical vocabulary, specific to experts in a certain field. Scroll down so you can see all that. The opposite of that, then, is layman's terms, which is everyday language everyone can understand. Well, if I'm a nurse and I'm writing a paper to other nurses, I can use all the medical terminology I want because the nurses are going to understand it. But if I'm a nurse and I'm writing a textbook for students, I'm going to have to change that vocabulary, explain things a little bit better to make sure that my students can understand it. We don't want our readers of our paper to be scratching their heads and thinking, huh? I don't get it. What's going on? Instead, we want our readers to understand everything that we are saying. And so that means one of the things we need to do is change our vocabulary to match our audience. But more than that, we also have to consider our tone. Tone is the attitude that comes across in your writing. So depending on who our audience is, is going to change what our attitude is like. Consider that you are talking about a horrible day that you've had that has just caused you to be late for class. When you're stuck in traffic and you're calling your best friend to complain, you're probably going to be a little bit whiny. You might yell a little bit, and that's okay. When you are having road rage and yelling at the person in front of you, you have a completely different tone. You're now angry. You might be using cuss words. But when you stroll into class late and your instructor asks why that is, you're not going to be whiny. You're certainly not going to yell and use cuss words. You're suddenly going to be respectful and apologetic. And so that's what tone is. So remember, you have to consider who you are writing to to make sure that your point gets across to, that pe to those people. And that means you have to change your vocabulary and your tone.